Okay, my name is Eric Cabrera. I'm the founding director of the Kwetu Film Institute. Kwetu is a Swahili word that means home. So I run the school, the film festival back home, which is famously known as Hollywood or cinema in the hills of Rwanda. You're a Rwandan, and how did you get into filmmaking? It all started within the framework of the aftermath of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. And uh, I was born and raised in exile, particularly in the eastern part of the Congo, a place called Goma. And uh, so when I finished my high school, I went to university. That's the very time when two million people flooded into the city of Goma. And uh, the security uh, was a problem. Uh, the whole town was flooded with uh, refugees dying on the street and uh, also militias, you know, you know, tossing grenades and, and holding guns and, and, uh, and, you know, machetes. And it was just like a bizarre situation. So anyway, I ended up uh, uh, going back into Rwanda, returning, like many of, of, of the other uh, refugees and, uh, and people you know from exile who had been into the region and then who returned after the RPF uh, took power yeah. and uh, the fact that I spoke some English at the time gave me an advantage actually to start working with uh, television crews you know from the BBC CNN and Channel 4 NPR and New York Times I mean I worked with everybody who came looking for a translator so that's how actually I started off. And you worked off. with somebody making one of the first films about the, the genocide. Correct. So like in a couple of years later, you know, in the course of my interactions with all these media uh, personalities and, 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 and journalists, I came across Nick Hughes, who was like a cameraman, for, a freelance cameraman for BBC and Channel 4. And uh, Nick Hughes uh, was uh, among, uh, if not the rare cameraman who actually shot the the footage the mm. famous footage on the genocide uh, a footage that was broadcast around the world and you know on which we actually ended up making a documentary called Iseta or the roadblock mm. and uh, together when we chatted and discussed uh, you know we decided that you know the only way how the genocide against the Tutsi could be shown to the rest of the world was to make a feature film yeah, you know, to fictionalize it. To fictionalize it. Because all the documentaries that were being made, all the news stories that were coming out, they were just focused on the intelligentsia, you know, the middle class in the UK, in France, in the US and other places. And uh, a fiction film can actually be blown up on the screen and be seen by, uh, you know, the regular mm. person, the in, person. In the average person, you know, in all these capital cities. So that's what we did. So we yeah. ended up producing 100 Days, which became the film that came out before Hotel Rwanda. And your last film was Africa United. What was that about? Uh, after making 100 Days, I went on and continued making films on the same subject, on the genocide. So I made the documentary titled Keepers of Memory. Then I made Through My Eyes and a few other shorts. Uh, along the line, I was actually training young filmmakers on techniques of making films. But the fact that I would go to international film festivals talking about my country and the pain and mm. the legacy of the genocide. So I decided to come up with a new uh, concept of making a film that is not necessarily about the genocide, but about joy of Africa, celebration and resilience. Mm. So that was the concept and, 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 uh, and literally the, you know, the genesis of Africa United, which was co-produced by Pathé or produced by Pathé and co-produced by... Uh, two other British producers, uh, Mark Blaney and Jackie Shepard. And uh, it became a very acclaimed film around the world in 2010 because it actually celebrated uh, Africa uh, within the theme of the World Cup because these mm. kids were literally tracking 3,000 miles yeah. across Africa going to South Africa. So it became like a metaphor of Africa Renaissance yeah. you know, at that time. Say now you have a, a documentary which you've just completed and are looking for distribution of. Yeah, yeah. So now I have a documentary titled Inore. Inore is, uh, is a theme or a name that means chosen or a person who can actually, you know, uh, deal with the challenge. Mm. And that's literally the metaphor of how Rwanda has overcome 20 years, you know, if you like, 21 years after the genocide. And I use uh, the youth, I use the 
young men and women and I focus on them actually to give us that narrative. But the film uh, starts, doesn't it, with a famous musician? Yeah, the film starts with a very famous musician who has actually gone through trauma. He lost his parents during the genocide and his siblings and then he literally spent the last 20 years denying the country. Yeah. And, and uh, he's never come back. He has never come back and then I use actually that metaphor of uh, of literally him talking to his country and actually reflecting upon his trauma. Mm. So the film has got many layers. It's a, it's a story of resilience, it's a story of, of overcoming, but it's also a, a story of beauty and, 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 joy, with and joy with dance. But it's sort of uh, made in a very special way because I put all these elements. If you see the film, you'll understand it if you know of Rwanda. So I did not want to make it just a regular you know, linear storytelling yeah. uh, technique. And I put it, I mean, there's a lot of trauma, there's a lot of uh, memory reflection, there's a lot of, uh, you know, analysis of yeah. what Rwanda is without literally going into all yeah. the essence of brutality. So it is done in a sense that you know, it can be accessible to, you know, to, to some people, you know, from different parts of the world without necessarily knowing all the details of, uh, of, of the atrocities that took place in 100 days. And actually, a few weeks back, uh, last week actually, I showed it to some kids from, from the United States who had seen Africa United. Yeah. And they fell in love because actually these kids were coming from Washington and studying uh, 21st century Africa. So it was actually a nice way to see that, you know, teenagers from, yeah. you know, different parts of the continent can actually uh, yeah. reflect upon it and understand. Last question is, is a difficult one to ask, which is, it took South Africa a long time in filmmaking terms to come to terms with apartheid. Maybe you never do, but when will Rwanda start making films that are not about the genocide, that are about life mm. now rather than life as, as was? Yeah, I think that, that, that's the whole concept because, uh, you know, as a filmmaker or as a pioneer uh, in my country, I cannot tell all the stories mm. and I cannot tell. Uh, uh, you know anything that is beyond my capacity. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I would love to make more other films that are not necessarily about the genocide, but the genocide films will always be made anyway. Mm. Uh, but within the pool of young men and women whom we have trained, so we have had like you know like twenty to thirty short films that have been made, and all of them are not necessarily about the genocide. Mm. But the the, the uh, you know the thread you know in many of them have you know, always been, you know, by the genocide, their personal experiences, their memory, their trauma, and, you know, the process of overcoming. So, with the next generation of filmmakers, I think they will do that, mm. but I cannot force, you know, no. force it up on them to, like, don't make films about yeah, the yeah. genocide. The so, pace will happen. Yeah, so they, yeah, and, and it's happening because, uh, you know, it's a new generation, you know, new technology, with the exposure that is there on YouTube and things like that. So, there's a wide range of dynamic uh, taking shape.